Hurry it up, woman. Our customers are particular about what they're buying. They like to see where it comes from. Get them right, Snapper. Cowley become an art lover. And he saw his first pound note. <laughs> yeah, why send us here? Improve on minds, he said. Well, with yours, he's got plenty of room to maneuver. Beautiful women and free champagne, eh, Gypsy? The only game in town. But blame it on a liberal education. I can't believe these prices, you know. We're in the wrong business, though. Yeah, I know. Should have been artistic. Could have cop for some of the loose living as well. I hope your new process is as good as you say. It costs enough money to develop it. I just hope we can keep it away from our competitors. Double the security patrols and pray. Stretch him. This is only some fourpenny steel design fun. We want to look at their etchings. Rather badly. Do your job, little man. Take the photographs. Earn your ten grand. at art galleries and I complained you didn't like the still works either what are we supposed to be working on huh that's a padded in tray for Cowley rather have a real job yeah pension policy you are okay who was it said inspiration is nine-tenths perspiration last year's Derby winner I hardly think so Bodie the bookies maybe Cowley here. Tell the gentleman from the ministry I'll be with him directly at the tech laboratory. Over and out. I hope you don't suffer from hay fever or anything of that sort. A lot of the lab staff bring their sandwiches in here for relaxation. The flowers, you know. It's a change from looking at rock samples and oil under microscopes. 
The minister wanted me to have a full and frank exchange of views. Which means telling each other half the truth with a sincere smile, naturally. He sent the right man. He did ask me for a thorough and urgent report as soon as available. You've read the file. Avidly. And? Their operative, Bodie and Doyle. Now, you know the sort of work we do here. They'd better be very good. I don't count your paper clips, Henry. Don't start counting mine. You have read the reports from six specialist law enforcement agencies. All the various squads, all from the men at the top, all helpless, against some very clever gentlemen specializing in art treasures and new industrial processes. Last week, the Orkenhurst Chalice. Last night, the Billings Argon Smelter. And this week, it could be here, straight and four, this department. And you're nervous. So am I. The usual Mickey Mouse flight plan, Tipsy. Straight drop and back. And the cargo manifest shows you one crate over. So I make the usual fuss and have to bring it back. But not until they've looked at it. Well, it's easier to annoy customs with inefficiency rather than bribe them. All we need is an examine case with seals on it. And Sarah can juggle the paperwork for the next trip, with the chalice. Work a switch. The Belgians don't like opening cases twice. Yeah. So they won't bother. The whole world runs on routine, Tibsy. Thank God. What about the steel process papers? But the customers play rough, hmm? I've organized a special delivery arrangement for those on my side of the fence. from some bloody ministry checked it. They still got through an alarm fence, laid two guards out, killed Higgins, and got at the droid. Any guesses? These Germans are working on a process like ours. Oh, they don't like competition unless they voted for it, eh? Yeah, we used a blunt instrument. One of the, one of the guards heard them. Uh, this is not we're English. One yokel, he said. Yeah, some yokel. Thanks. These Germans. Well, there goes another urgent consignment for the diplomatic pouch. Yeah, with security waving and saying, have a nice trip. The minister calls it Operation Colander. Why? Because goodies are leaking from every hole. Oh, very witty. He's not pleased. Not am I. Nor are the bosses of the special squads involved. Somebody set up a supermarket to get rid of the cream of thieving to order. Art and industry, small and selective. The cream's thick enough to make murder incidental. Look at the figures. Yeah, the Alconhurst Chalice, what was that, 200,000? More on the private market. Had to be to get through laser alarms. I can't get worked up about some sacks and pot. But it's a smelting prototype, really worth half a million. That's the taxpayer's research money that went into it. And a guard was killed to lift the details. A word from you about undermanning to the police, the fellow Deacon, and perhaps in the chief constable's ear. Both easily done, I'll be more than glad to. God knows I don't mind gypsies living off the land, but they've damn near stripped my bottom orchard, and I don't get much chance for a decent partridge season this year. Yes, well, we're doing our It's best. all right, all right. I know you've got all patrols on overtime. The gyps can smell a panda car three valley fields away. Oh, well, at least I've got Armitage and that dog of his. Another deterrent I'd like to face. It's still a bit much, though. The whole country is riddled with petty dishonesty and drunkards on the dole. All right. I'll write those letters this afternoon. I'd better go and pacify the civil servants. And not? You caught two small timers the other day with rolls of classified electronics under their arm. They said they've been told what to steal. Half hundred weight of paper. With the usual deposit from a man in a pub who gave them time, place, master keys. Here it is. They tried to do it in the cheap, without a photographer to reduce the drawings to a manageable size. Not like the seal works. We might not be as lucky next time, or as well informed. The time to close the unfriendly neighborhood supermarket. So, we're looking for a photographer first, aren't we? Right. Let's check the porno picture list, eh? See who's gone up in the world. See who's swapping skin flicks for steel.
Vern, here. Uh, when do you want this dummy manifest for the Alkenhurst chalice stated? Tomorrow. The sooner the better, while Tibbsy is still supposed to be indignant about our paperwork. Yes, I could swing across to Geneva and bank last month's takings at the same time. Never confuse movement with action, Tibbsy. Hemingway should have taught you that at Sandhurst. One objective at a time. Oh, and Armitage. I think we'd be better off with a new photographer. Go and look up the old one and itemize him. Ask him for his resignation, as you were. Yes. Permanently. <laughs> Your idea. You can put exotic dances on your expenses. I'll uh, put it down as technical research. I bet there's not a meeting made in sight, see? Oh, they're all in the bedding shops, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I told you, didn't I? This comes to my place, are they? Look, Charlie, CI5 have done the vice squad plenty of favours, all clean ones. Now, you keep trying for us, eh? Who? Snapper Allman, used to work for the Orinoco Club. Yeah, I got you. Thanks. There's depravity everywhere. Charles, I know the minister's agitated. He's been rattling the telephone in my ear. Now, now, please don't quote tired facts at me. I've just been quoting them at Cowley. Processes worth millions, all stolen. Yes, I've read your probability study. As the next most feasible and vulnerable area for these thieves is oil technology. My department. Yes, yes. It's my responsibility, especially straight and four. And, and Charles, the next time you have a happy thought, don't pass it on. Bar parlor pewter. And now, it is a unique Anglo-Saxon relic. I wonder why the client should want to pay nearly a quarter of a million pounds for that, even once he'd seen the photographs of origin. So that he can gloat over it in private, in Geneva, in a bank vault. Haven't you ever gloated in private, darling? Not in a bank vault. You could do, though. If somebody left you an oil well, we've never really looked at oil, have we? Afternoon. Ah, oh, they've all got clothes on. Never mind, wait till you see the private collection. Yeah, uh, someone had told me I'd have got tired of the female anatomy, I'd have laughed. Yeah, you, you know that last one back there? Yeah. He had the original sister in poor sight. I hope you get lucky this time. I'm losing my appetite, you know? Yeah. Yeah. New job suiting you, Mr. Allman? Well, it's a bit dodgy sometimes. It's the geezers I'm working with, mainly. A very regulation. Almost military, you could say. Not like the crowd down the Orinoco Club. Hello, Snapper. Seen any good indecent exposures lately? We have. Who are you? Complaint from the passport office. Get lost. Oh, it's the old Wembley two-step. Yeah, corrugate your shins, will you? Call him off, Snapper, or he'll be wearing that tripod round his neck. Wait a minute, Purse. Down in Burlington Street, they're getting very beady about bias. Reckon you've gone industrial. Yeah, you know, um, engineers' drawings, steel works. It's all right, Purse. You sure? Yeah. What do you want? Hmm? Oh, yeah, it's, uh... It's about my niece's wedding group. You made Uncle Albert look bold. Who are you? You the buttons? I'll be fair, Snapper. Hey, do we look like members of Her Majesty's Constabulary? No. Well, there you are, then. You must have a guilty conscience. Do you want a drink? Please, mate. Do you fancy being an accessory, Snapper? <laughs> Too. That was convincing, darling. Thank you. 
This is Herr Dr. Ebert. Delighted to meet you, Herr Doctor. The document should have been delivered to Germany, Colonel, by you. Not risk to a diplomatic pouch, at my culpability and inconvenience. Last time I delivered, I didn't like my reception much. Machine pistols flying and arguments about money. I was cheated. Elementary strategy, never take the same risk twice. So, I picked home ground. Among friends. Money all right, Sarah? Yes. In the currencies you requested. Pay me for it? No. I thought not. Drawings all right? As per order and specification. Good. I'll go back to my game then. I would like to say it's been a pleasure doing business with you, Colonel. But I prefer not to be hypocritical. I'm in it for the money, Herr Doctor. Not for the sunshine of your smile. To start searching diplomatic pouches, particularly East German ones, on the works manager's advice. Oh, that would be diplomatically most embarrassing. Oh, an incident resulting only in strongly worded letters. Which would you rather have, a red face and writer's cramp, or details of the smelting process back? Uh, that's for the politicians to decide. It always is, Henry, it always is. Well, I'll make a telephone call. I hope the exertion doesn't tell on you. What's your department doing, Cowley? What it can, Henry. Don't give us any ancient moody about some Samaritan you met in a pub! Yeah, just give us a for instance, will you? Why should I tell you anything? You know why, Snuffer. They could be the next people to walk through that door, and if you saw them do it, they will be. One of them made a phone call to his boss once. From this place we were turning over. I only managed to get the first five figures. Uh, no, five. Just write it on the back of that, will you? Big clear hand. Quid's worth. You won't be needing that. The Colonel said to ask for your resignation. <laughs> That's interesting. Photographs and memories forever. I hope you've got plenty of snaps of yourself. authority to inquire. Putting you through. Should come through messenger channels. Channels are for hovercraft. Listen, what are the numbers? No, five, seven, seven, three, six mean to you? Easy. The Felby area. One digit missing. <sighs> Great, thanks. Uh, by the way, Mr. Cowley already has a full computer printout of the possible permutations of that number and its subscribers. He's in the computer room now. Wants to see you. Yes, he would. Yes, Minister, I'm aware that the whole matter is very sensitive. Yes, Minister, it will be treated accordingly. Very good, sir. Tiptoe through those customary tulips. Ah, gentlemen. Are you still serious about becoming office boys? We're only trying to help. Yeah, the switchboard, flashing lights. Uh, it's easier to delegate. The Felby number you were given works out at a list of uh, ten subscribers. Hmm. Including an establishment for cream tea. That's that sort of tone. You will check all the numbers. I don't think we have to look any further than this Colonel Sangster, do we? He's tailor-made for it. Oh, I agree. Import-export agency, legitimate aeroplane. A very high telephone bill for chats to Leningrad, Geneva and so on, mainly about antiques. Well, why don't we just lift him, then? A small item called Proof Body. Hard to find against a man with considerable standing in the area. Bridge with the Lord Lieutenant. Golf with the Chief Constable. Yeah. Look at his war record. Not thirsty, is it? He was in military intelligence. Possibly still is on the private grapevine. Yeah, the minister won't be too pleased with that. 
Oh, well, we could wear our clean shirts if you thought he was sensitive. Certainly not your usual brass knuckles. Here, look at Sangster's record again, if you please. You're outclassed. He was hijacking and stealing and killing for highly patriotic reasons, of course, when you were in your cradles. All the jobs in recent files show that he hasn't slipped in any way. No wonder the special squads can't catch him. Gentlemen, we're up against a fellow professional. Oh, uh, when you've checked through this stuff, I'll see you at my club at lunchtime. The club? You're looking pleased with yourself? The first post was a cryptic confirmation of the Alkenhurst chalice payments. Oh. I always enjoy the results of putting sound theory into practice. Choose and restrict operations, reconnoiter them, worship simplicity and remote control, leave as few traces as possible. On that, where the hell's Armitage? Shouldn't take him this long to itemize one photographer. You know, when I first met you, I thought you were one of the usual weekend wonders. Good for um, a magnum at the bedside and possibly a shopping spree in the south of France. And then goodbye. And now you're independently wealthy. Mm. Seems rather immoral, really. Oh, Sarah, my love, the moment you even start thinking about morality, you're lost. Copy politicians. They sign papers, gather millions, and men die. Emulate them. I thought we were doing. So we are, in our way. Excuse me, gentlemen. Are you members? Oh, it's all right, Smithson. They're with me. Very good, Mr. Carney. Uh, the minister has asked me to reserve Evesham asparagus and fresh sea trout. I trust that'll be in order. For two. Very much so. For two. We'll grab a sausage sandwich at Nellie's camp. Thank you. If you've got time. Homework done, gentlemen? Yes, well, sir. So. Sit you down. So, uh, what do the local police think about this Colonel Sangster? A respectful. He's clean and shining and influential. I think they're a wee bit frightened of him. Uh, you know how these small communities are. Not much help, then. Uh, unless it's from the inside. Uh, you were in the police, weren't you, Dora? Yeah, a long time and a lot of footsore pavements ago. <laughs> You've just rejoined. What? But the sign of the old blue lantern can't wait. Oh, no. On the inside at Philby. Oh. Your rank is Detective Sergeant, you're seconded to Philby. Oh, Jack, what a thrill you'd be able to arrest all this nasty motorist, won't you? Shut up, you. Listen, sir, I'm well out of practice with police work. Uh, you'll remember. You'll report to Chief Superintendent David Gillespie. Close to retirement, but a hard man all the same. Also a close friend of the Colonel. I've had this report on you sent to him. Uh, you used to be with B Division. Detective Sergeant Doyle is sloppy, careless of routine, insubordinate, and should work under close supervision at all times. Thanks very much. With a report like that, I should be scrubbing the ablution floor. And worse. Doyle, you're going to fail me to pick brains, shuffle files, find out what's been missed or covered up. What's the point of you going down there as Dick Daring, the brightest star of Scotland Yard? I want you kept off the real work. Yes, sir. At no time will you get in touch with this office. All contact will be through Bodie. Ostensibly... He'll be in sugar beet machinery. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, I hope you feel well trapped. Incidentally, your squeaky photographer's dead. So that's one witness we won't be able to put on the stand, even under the Official Secrets Act. I'd better take your gun back to Armory, Doyle. There's one up the spout. Thank you. You're a respectable policeman, though. Constable. The minister tells me you're seeking special powers. We've always had special powers, Henry. I was being specific. He said unorthodox. He wants to think about it. 
Ministers can never think after a good lunch interferes with their digestion. Well, I don't think I can quite trust you, Cowley. You don't have to. Just a faith in the results. We're 20% undermanned and they send us ragtime cowboy Joe. Detective Sergeant Doyle. Give him the chance, Harry. I'll try, Chief. Sloppy and careless of routine. I'll keep one foot on his neck, me on not far from his backside. Chief, what use will he be when the itinerant labourers come in and start smashing up the pub gardens? He'll probably give them a hand. It is only for six weeks, Inspector. To broaden his experience. I'll broaden it for him. He'll go to sleep dreaming of city lights and wake up wishing he was back. Detective Sergeant Doyle reporting for duty among the hayseeds. City copper then. Come down to teach us country ones how to do it. Not late, Sally. I'll soon have a fast kip in the back of the car. The name's Gorton. And you look as if you need a bath. Oh, you've got baths down here, have you? I thought you just made do with a quick sluice in the duck bun. All the same, aren't you? Walk the dirty streets and think everyone's dirty. I lived in a city once. Like a zoo. Must be why you need keepers like me. I'd rather say good morning to people, not poke a stick at them. Yeah, well, I find the civility doesn't work too well when somebody's shoving a bottle in your face. I wouldn't say you knew too much about civility. You want to teach me? I might have to if I'm going to work with you. Start now. Any time. You can have the slum manners you came down here with, or you can have an argument. Started arguing already, have you, Dora? Nah. That's the way I couldn't argue with a black pudding. First one's always on the house. Oh, cheers. Thanks very much. I hope you'll be comfortable here. Yeah, I may come here often. Bad time for your job, isn't it? Hey? You know what farmers are like. Every year's the worst, and this year's worse than ever. Yeah, well, I'm just up here doing a bit of surveying. Oh. Skyving, really. Very strange name for a pub, isn't it? Sangsters? Mm, that's after the colonel there. Or rather, his family. Lords of the manor. Have been for generations. Yeah, he looks like a customer you'd stay the right side of. You do if you've got any sense. Not that there's much choice. Not in here, Sam Armitage. Not with that dog. You've been told. Doesn't worry about Baron. He's only playing. He always takes the strangers. He leaves them alone, mind, once they've bought a drink. Perhaps your little doggy would like to chew this fire. Or maybe you just leave, like the lady says. I remember your face. I'll try and forget yours. Nice sense of tactics you have, friend. Where'd you learn it? Same place as you, adjutant. Shilling a day. Well, the laundry didn't leave out the start when they sent the old man in this morning, did they? So it's Superintendent Gillespie to you? Yes, sir, of course, sir. He doesn't like time wasters. Not when they keep poking around files. Nor ten-page reports. Nobody does. Even the people who write them. I was working from your notes, remember? He doesn't like sergeants. He can't manage a decent shave, either. Yes, well, you see, the razor gets a bit shaky when you've been up all night, keeping both eyes open on turkey pens. Get off my back, Ralston. Inspector Ralston to you. Yes, Inspector. Have a puncture on me, Inspector. Sonny, if I do, you'll mend it.
lips are getting a little restless. Not their job. You included. Tibsy's had two legitimate flights in that little aeroplane of his. And Armitage has slaughtered his normal quota of helpless animals. No, Josh Cronair's the only happy one. More beer money than he's ever seen, even at harvest. I can explain Tibsy's trouble. Some insolent salesman staying down the village. Tibsy wants to give him a fat lip. It's a phrase they use in the moving pictures. Colonel, darling, Jeremy, you are dodging the entire issue. What they want is the risk and the excitement and the loot, and so do you. So you're the new sergeant, then? Yeah. I used to be in the mountains, but my horse was retired. Sad. Mm. They're keeping you busy? Why, well, hadn't you heard? It's a big crime wave on. People drunk in charge of lawnmowers. One of them was a member of the parish council. Just goes to show the most respectable ones are the worst. Mm, I know. Mind you, we reported him to Colonel Sangster. He was given seven days in the greenhouse. What do I mean, Glasshouse? Both. I bet you miss London, don't you? No, only the gang fights and the diesel fumes. But Inspector Rolson is going to teach me old time dancing. Mm -hmm. There's another stranger over there. You can compare notes. Hello. Hello. Fancy a drink? Oh, yes, please. Not the usual. <sighs> Same again. How's business? Oh, uh, machinery's a bit off at the moment. Yeah, I know how you feel. Yeah, cutting beet isn't quite what it used to be. No, 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 that's cowley. If it doesn't make something happen soon, I'm going to turn into a giant marrow. Thank you, Bessie. How much is that? Yeah, enjoy your rest while you can, anyway. <laughs> perfect forms known to man as a triangle. I have two corners of it, operative and suspect. I need the third. Bait. If you know somebody's going to steal something, it's much easier to catch the thief. You can't have straightened four. It's too far ahead. Uh, you just can't have it, even with a minister's permission. I've got to have straightened four. Genuine bait. Just a beautiful golden picture in a beautiful golden frame. I thought you were in good voice in church this morning, Jeremy. I always enjoy reading the lesson. Traditional. Mm. Especially the bit about, uh, let he who is without sin cast the first stone. Yes. You could see half the congregation reaching in one another's pockets. <laughs> Business sections first, my love. The egghead back-scratching can wait. Who reads books? The usual look around the marketplace, see what's on offer. Oh, that's how we found the chalice. Have you got this in the Times, Jeremy? Yes, I have. I must say a prayer for informative publicity next week. What is it? Well, it starts off with the usual mawkish come on about Britain leading the world. To the bloody pawn shop. In this case, oil. It tells of an interesting new device called Straighten 4, a new deep sea pressure gauge for sticking at the end of drills to calculate strata strength and radius. Silicon chip seismography. Sounds expensive. It is. About a million pounds worth. More to our sort of customers. How big? Fits into a small tea chest. Every bathroom should have one, for the bath oil, of course. Unfunny, Sarah. 
On Wednesday, it leaves the refinery for evaluation at the NPL. Well, well, Tibsy. I think you'd better polish up your ergs and hydrocarbons, or whatever they call them, and head there with all ears flapping. Initial there. Mm -hmm. And there. And sign at the bottom. Thank you. I now have to ask you, Mr. Carley, if you realize that your department, CI-5, has just accepted full responsibility for Straighten 4, a piece of apparatus worth close on a million pounds. I realize. We'll do our best not to mislay it. Uh, you'll be taken straight into MPL tomorrow, Huey. What for this time? Orders. You may or may not be the police officer you say you are. In any event, my bailiff has orders to evict or shoot any poachers or intruders. You're pushing the law a bit, aren't you, Colonel? Or protecting my own property. I'm prepared to argue it in a court of law. You might have to. Because if your bailiff doesn't put that gun down, I'm going to put wheel marks right across his navel. <laughs> like ferrets, especially insolent official ones. Get me Chief Superintendent Gillespie, will you? Colonel Sangster is chairman of the Board of Magistrates. He's not the bloody mafia, so leave him alone. He's still an ordinary citizen and it was still a routine patrol. Any other town would take a dim view of having shotguns waved at its coppers. And with your type of lip, you probably deserved it. And Colonel Sangster is not an ordinary citizen. <laughs> Oh, the class system rules, okay. What was that? Just the same. Uh, Bodie, the name of the place we're living in is nowhere. I don't know. <coughs> Got my share of cream teas here. <laughs> Any crumbs of comfort? Yeah, a couple. The bouncer at the Orinoco saw a man coming out of almonds just after his neck was broken. Man had a dog. <sighs> Sam Armitage. Was he whistling? I don't know, it's not on the report, but the aforementioned Armitage just sold my landlady a very pricey camera for about 50 quid. Oh, yes, yes. There's bargains everywhere, mate, you know, where to look for them, but it's still circumstance on circumstance on accident. Got no proof, have we? Carly wants to see me this afternoon. Oh, I'm on duty. Get off it. Easy. Once I'd uh, lubricated the right foreman and got the hang of the axe. They're moving this straightened four thing tomorrow. Very low key, no special security laid on. Just a couple of plate layer types and a works van. Enjoying the country life? Has its moments, sir. Not for much longer. We've just been entrusted with a government device worth quite a lot of money. Straight and four. What, this? Well, I wish it was. No, that's your personal homing pigeon. It's locked into the device and the apparatus so that sleeping or waking, you know its whereabouts. Why? Because we're almost sure that Sangster's going to steal it. And we stop him, right? You better. No sign for the apparatus. Look at the scene of the object. Drop a hand on the colonel's collar and say, Hey, you. No, no, you'll stay where you are. Oh, not more cream teas. You and Doyle around the clock. Doyle said he'd be on duty. He'll be right. I want Sangs to lift it as he's trying to get the apparatus out of the country. I want to find out how it's done. Also, no matter how half-hearted, I want a treason charge to lay on him, as well as the theft. Oi. Morning. 
I thought it was Ralston. I thought it was a haystack on the fire. Not a haystack, you, Doyle. We've just drawn 24-hour eyeballs on the Sangster export business, so you better apply for leave or whatever procedural corridors you creep down in the modern fuzz. Well, best way is via the police doctor. She's not too bloodshot from breathalyzers to fill in forms and triplicate. Yeah, well, I'm sure you could fake sleep in sickness, couldn't you? You're a natural. Nah, just mistake me for the police sergeant. Oh, come on, mate. For... Uh, it's all right. There are other ways. <clears throat> Providing you're not too worried about your pension. I'll see you. Thank you, Sarah. Yes, of course I'm pleased. It's a firm offer. You know I don't like speculation. There's an affray at the Sangster Arms. Officers in need of assistance. You're supposed to be the hot shot action man. What are you hanging about for? Wednesdays. I only attend affrays on Wednesdays. Okay, Sangster. Out. Where the hell do you think you're going? Oh, dentist appointment. Stop being funny and come on. <laughs> motorbike escort this time, you? They did ask, but they said no. <laughs> They're probably saving petrol. No, oh, that's it. All right, Dave. Cheers. Yeah. shot and a tap on the head. Think about it. Get him in the back. All the samples say that. It's the mark of a great salesman. We've got 20 minutes. <clears throat> Do your leg exercises, though. Tipsy. Sorry about that, sir. Had to eliminate with extreme prejudice. Case is ready and the plane's warming up. Over. And the flight plan? Over? Yes, all filled in. Well, Carly wants to know how they do it, we can tell him. Yeah, they just switch seals. It's a good way of making money out of a conjuring trick. Thank you, Miss Piper.
I think we'd better call for reinforcements, mate. Well, not on that thing. They've got a full-frequency radio in there. I'd still like to attract someone's attention, or we might both end up on the police force. <laughs> A good time? It was worked out, my dear. Well, there, boy. Well done. Right, tips it. Okay. Never did like dogs. Even greyhounds lose for me. Listen, spike that bloody aircraft, all right? sent you. Well, where'd you get this? World Wildlife. Armitage, handcuffs. The prospect of a dive from 8,000 feet up might make him change his mind. Miss Piper. Thank you. Whose birthday is it? Yours? Uh, no. Thank you, Mr. Cowley. Oh, thank you, Mr. Galbraith. Can I now confirm that Straighten Four is now entirely your property? Uh, you can. This exercise, gentlemen, has been a classic demonstration of how to have your cake and eat it. <laughs> 